Hi, this is Millie Kay, and it's Sunday, July 16th, 2017. And the subject of today's video is the eight mile long dam in the Oroville Thermolito complex. And the dam that I'm talking about is the Thermolito After Bay Dam. It's 42,000 feet long, which is just shy of eight miles. And it's the longest dam in the California State Water Project. And let me show you here on this Google satellite view, the Thermolito After Bay. And this dam runs along the west side of the Thermolito After Bay and along the southern part of the After Bay. The eastern and northern sides of the After Bay, um, the water is contained by the natural terrain. So this After Bay is multi-purpose. It's a recreational body of water, you know, boating, fishing. It also releases water into the Feather River, and I'll talk about that Feather River outlet in a minute. It's also part of the pump back operation whereby water can be pumped from the after bay and go back all the way to the Oroville Reservoir. That's done when the Thermolito pumping and generating plant is operational, which it isn't now, but that's what uh, takes the water to be pumped back into the four bay and then ultimately on to the, to the Hyatt power plant for a reverse pump back up into the, the Oroville Reservoir. So, and another important purpose for the after bay is it uh, diverts agricultural water through various outlets to uh, deliver the water to those who hold the rights to it. And a lot of the water rights go back before the dam was even built. So that's part of DWR's obligation is to uh, deliver that water uh, through these outlets to the agricultural, uh, to those who own the rights. And I won't get too much into that. It's a complicated issue about uh, how the water gets distributed. It goes through these outlets into canals that are part of irrigation districts and, and other systems that you know, they have joint agreements. And um, so, like I say, it can get complicated in an area that is uh, so heavily agricultural. But let's go where this this uh, Feather River outlet that I told you about. I'm going to start there. And this is the uh, outlet to the Feather River from the After Bay. The water goes through this gate structure and, and then ends up in the Feather River. As the Feather River goes through Oroville, it's called the Low Flow Channel. And once this water from the After Bay has been released into the Feather River, it becomes the high flow channel. And it is referred to as the high flow channel all the way until it gets to Verona, which is a little bit before Sacramento. That's where the Feather River flows into the Sacramento River. And this is the gate structure that you would see when you're driving along and come to the Feather River outlet. There's five radial gates and the maximum uh, control capacity uh, through these gates is 17,000 cubic feet per second. And the gates are, as I said, they're radial gates and they're about 14 feet wide and 14 feet uh, high. So this is a little closer view. This is Google, satellite, uh, Google Street View. And then as the water goes under the bridge, it goes past the energy dissipators and then on to the Feather River. So that's the Feather River outlet. And next we'll be talking about the canal outlets.
So here we are at the Feather River outlet, and if we keep following the dam and come around, we will end up at this outlet here, the Sutter Butte Canal outlet. And this is what it looks like when you come up on this area. This is a pretty good view of the dam. The dam is, uh, from its base to its crest, is 39 feet, and it's an earth-filled dam. So if we were to go to the other side into the after bay area, this is a satellite view of that. This is the uh, Sutter Butte Canal outlet is also gated. It has four radial gates and they're each about five by six feet. I've seen differing um, figures on that, but in general, uh, five feet wide and six feet high. And then the water goes under the road and into this channel, which then uh, flows on and joins the Sutter Butte Canal. So let's see. This is a good aerial view. And here's the street view. So here we are at this area right here, and if we keep following the dam and turn north onto Highway 99, and if we keep going all the way almost till we get to the turnoff for to go to the Oroville Dam, um, there's another outlet. I don't know the name of this outlet for sure. I've seen um, various um, names that might be associated with this but there's a lack of information about it uh, they will only talk about in some publications the other canals and not this one so I don't know why and I'm not able to see here what kind of a gate structure it has so I don't know if maybe if this is a pump instead of a gate I don't know but I don't see a gate structure here so but the water you know has it, there's an outlet right here and the water goes through this ditch and then under highway 99 and I'll show you the street view this is I just call it a ditch um, And then the other side, it goes goes on down the way. But until I know for sure, I'm just going to consider it unknown. Perhaps some of my viewers who live locally can fill me in uh, to clear up some confusion I have about this particular outlet. So if you keep going up Highway 99, uh, you keep seeing this long, long dam on the right, and on the left you see a lot of rice fields. Rice is a big crop in this area, in all these rural areas around here, because um, the climate is conducive for growing rice, and the composition of the soil, plus the um, availability of water. So rice is a huge crop around here. So if you keep going, well, if you keep going, you'll end up in Chico, but when you get to the end of the Thermalito uh, after bay, you can see it here. It's, you're getting to the, the northwest corner of the Thermalito after bay. Uh, Highway 99, you'll see, goes over two canals, and that's the Western Canal and the Richvale Canal, and this is what they look like. They are gated. Let me get closer here. These, uh, the Western Canal has five gates and the, the uh, size of the gates is about, they're radial and they're about eight feet by eight feet. And this is all one structure. 
but then the uh, Rich Bell Canal is, uh, has three radial gates, and they're about six feet by six feet. So here's a street view of the Western Canal as it goes on its way on the other side of the highway. And then you can see uh, fields in, in the background, the uh, rice fields. And as I said, I'm not going to go too much into where the water goes and what it does, but there's an excellent video put out by the Western Canal Water District. Um, and I'm going to put a link to it in the description box for this video. And I really highly suggest that you watch it. It'll fill in a lot of information about uh, where the water goes and um, also some stuff about the the uh, rice crops and it shows some harvest and some really just beautiful footage of the area so I recommend that and then there's one other one that I'll also put a link to in the description box it's a guy that uh, owns a family farm and uh, he uh, is doing some harvest driving the big combine and that's also an excellent video it's uh, kind of a short one and it shows uh, it's in pre it high definition and it just shows some really good uh, shots of the, the uh, rice harvest. So with that I will uh, end this video and I really appreciate your views. I hope that you will like, subscribe, and share and I'll see you later.